Christian greetings to all our valued listeners and viewers throughout the whole world, more particularly to all shepherds, rod believers, and most especially to our beloved brothers and sisters in the United States of America. Special greetings to our brethren in Colorado and Fiji Island, in Mexico, Spain, Africa, United Kingdom, and to our brethren in Australia, and to the rest of the 144,000 living saints scattered abroad. Good evening and may the good Lord bless you. This is our episode number 12 of the subject, the Bible calendar. But this is a special episode and as a complete summarization of the entire subject. Now, the main purpose of Son's revelation, first of all, is to locate the exact period of times concerning every Bible time prophecy. For all the Bible time prophecy must be reckoned with the Bible reckoning. And Bible reckoning, according to Answerer number 3, page 46, the same in track number 6, page 21, that it must be reckoned with 12 months in a year and 30 days each month, 360 days every year. And that is called the Bible reckoning. And one of the most important parts in this study is to unlock the one of the most important Bible time prophecy, the 6,000 years prophecy. And since the 2,300 years Bible time prophecy had been reckoned by such Bible reckoning, 12 months in a year, 30 days each month, 360 days every year. And the Shepherds were declared clearly that the Bible calendar was given by God to Moses. It says here in Answerer number 3, page 10 and 11, The Lord gave to Moses the sacred yearly calendar, which cannot be lost or miscalculated so long as the earth remains. Therefore, whatever the unfoldment of the truth concerning the restoration of the Bible calendar, the foundation or the basis must be found in the book of Moses, the first five books in the Bible, the Pentateuch. Now, the statement in track number 14, page 6, saying, All of these counterparts then are but another scriptural intimation and confirmation of the age-old truth that history repeats itself and on a much broader scale than in the original. Track number 14, page 6. This passage can also be applied with the restoration of the Bible calendar. The very first restoration of the Bible calendar, we know, was occurred in the days of Moses, according to Answerer number 3, page 11, saying, Thus was the Lord re-establishing the creation calendar. The very word itself, creation calendar, shows that such calendar, was established in the days of creation or during the creation week. And the shepherd's rod called it the antediluvian calendar. Here in 2SR page 248, saying this fact proves that the antediluvian monthly calendar consisted of 30 days to a month. 5 times 30 equals 150. 2SR 248. And that antediluvian calendar without any doubts. That is the calendar that was established by God in the days of creation. But when ancient Israel were in Egyptian bondage for 215 years, they lost sight of with the creation calendar or the antediluvian calendar. And one of the purpose why God take out his people from Egypt is to observe the feast, the holy feast in the wilderness as is stated in Exodus chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. And since God himself according to answer number 3 page 9 and page 10 saying, Thus the all-knowing one who created the heavenly bodies and knows the very moment he set them in motion to govern the day, the month, and the year, decreed that the holy feast be observed in the very month and on the very day on which they were first ordained. And since God's people had been lost sight of with 
the Bible calendar or the Croatian calendar or the antediluvian calendar being in Egyptian bondage for 215 years, it says here in Answerer number 3, page 10 and 11, to prevent his people from bringing upon themselves such a catastrophe and to have them intelligent as to the time the year begins, the Lord gave to Moses the sacred yearly calendar which cannot be lost or miscalculated so long as the earth remains. And then it says, Thus was the Lord re-establishing the creation calendar. Answerer number 3, pages 10, page 11. And that history had been repeated when God's people had been in captivity, in Babylonian captivity, which is the antitypical Babylon, which is the papacy. During the Dark Ages, for 1,260 years, the the Bible calendar, the creation calendar, was lost sight of. And the only calendar which is familiar to the Christians is the Gregorian calendar. Here in track number 10, page 38, it says here, Though the nations of today do not follow the biblical monthly calendar that in no wise alters the fact, that the original weekly cycle has never been changed and as it is entirely independent of both the solar and the lunar calendars had God not preserved it intact throughout all the ages the saints now in the times of restitution of all things would have great difficulty to restore it and to vindicate its integrity track number 10 page 38 and since the, the type is the unmistakable evidence for the object in view, according to 1 SR 226, it says the times themselves are not the true object, no more than a photograph is, but it is a representation which pictures an unmistakable evidence, the object in view. So the object in view in reality is pointing to the 144,000 spiritual Israel going out of Egypt. So here in 2SR 275, it says, You will also note on page 222 that the 430 prophetic years originally applied to Abraham and his seed overlap the 430 of Ezekiel chapter 4. The 430 years of Ezekiel should terminate in 1929 or 1930, but the perfect fulfillment of the prophetic period of Abraham in its antitype is yet in the future going out of Egypt. 2 SR page 275. So, here, brothers and sisters, we can see the type and antitype. Accordingly, in the type, God did not as yet restore the creation calendar while they were still in Egypt, not until God take them out from Egyptian bondage. And one of the main purpose that God need to restore the creation calendar so that they could be able to observe the holy feast on the very day and on the very month by which they were first ordained. And there is no possibility that they could be able to observe the holy feast without the creation Bible calendar or the antediluvian calendar. So that historical event being the type is also pointing to the true object in view in the antitype when the 144,000 living saints will depart from Egyptian bondage. Uh, only in the antitype, it seems that it is in reverse order. Because in the type, God uh, takes them out physically from Egyptian bondage. And God desired that in the wilderness, they would take out in their lives Egypt literally and spiritually. But According to the Shepherd's Rod in 1 TG number, number 7, it says here, pages 10 and 11, 
Mark you every adult that left Egypt except Caleb and Joshua had to be buried before the youth could cross the Jordan. Why? Because though God did take them with ease out of Egypt, he could not get Egypt out of them. Are you still wondering why the prophet Elijah must turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers? Malachi 4 verse 6. 1 TG number 7, pages 10 and page 11. So in the antitype, God will no longer employ the same method in the type. By which when God take ancient Israel from Egyptian bondage, they were mixed multitude. But in the antitype, only those who had been proven faithful in their lives that they completely abandoned Egypt literally and spiritually, they will be the only ones who will be taken out by God physically from the Egyptian bondage. And that is the reason why God reestablished again the creation bible calendar so that god's people could be able to observe the holy feast on the very day on the very month by which it were first ordained by god now for example brothers and sisters i would like to read to you in track number two saying on page 45 oh brother sister be not fooled if this does not reach your heart now in time to save you from the evil to come, it will surely overtake you eventually, but then only to destroy, not to save you. So stay no longer with the grizzled horses in Egypt, for to do so will be only to perish there with them while the bait take the chariot to the promised land. And the evil to come mentioned here is the overflowing scourge stated in 1 SR on page 64 saying this experience of the Israelites in departing from Egypt was written for the instruction of those who should live in the last days before the overflowing scourge shall come upon the dwellers of the earth the Lord calls upon all who are Israelites indeed to prepare for that event. So to prepare for that event. And we know that that is pointing to that predicted event when God will take out his people from Egypt physically. Here in 3 Symbolic Code 11 to 12, page 12, it says, The call to ancient Israel was a call to come out of Egypt was a call to come out of Egypt and into the promised Canaan. The call to modern Israel is a call to come out of antitypical Egypt and into the heavenly Canaan. 3 Symbolic Code 11 to 12, page 12. Although that is not our subject. I'm trying to emphasize that the purpose of the restoration of the Bible calendar is to prepare our lives concerning that protected event when God will take out his people from Egyptian bondage physically, brothers and sisters. And here in 2SR, page uh, 216 and 217, it says, the spell prophecy bears witness of this by the following statement. The Passover was to be both commemorative and typical, not only pointing back to the deliverance from Egypt, but forward to the greater deliverance which Christ was to accomplish in freeing his people from the bondage of sin. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 277. So... The shepherds had made it so plain that the that historical event when God delivered his people from Egypt and that is during the Passover week, it is not only commemorative, but it is also typical according to the voice of inspiration. Now let us now try to uh, gradually study 
the restoration of the Bible calendar. And it is one of the subjects by which B.T. Hotel says in track number 3 on page 67 saying, The scriptures often employ mathematical means in defining existence of time. So it says, mathematical means in defining of existence of time a number of years from one biblical event to another. So we need now to study the scripture through mathematical means as stated in the shepherd's run. And since we already uh, read brethren that accordingly only the weekly cycle that had been preserved by God intact throughout the ages that never been destroyed, never been altered, never been changed. And the purpose of God in such preservation is to be the, the key to unlock such truth that had been trodden underfoot, the monthly and the yearly Bible calendar. And since it consists 360 days every year, 12 months in a year and 30 days each month, as stated by the shepherd's rod. Now, in this study, let us use the, the year of crucifixion as the center of attraction. I would like to read that reading in 2SR page 142, saying that the cross of Christ is the only center of attraction. 2SR page 100. 42. Now, since the shepherd's rod plainly told us that Jesus Christ was crucified on 31 AD, April 16, which is Friday. So, in exhibit number one, I would like to... So, this is the calendar. The only given clue is the 16th, which is Friday, which is 31 AD. We have... The statement in Sister Wine in the Great Controversy 327 and also in the Shepherd's Rod in Answerer and also track number three. Right? And I think every Davidian are familiar to such event. Now here in Answerer number three, page 13 and 14, it says, To establish the date of his baptism, as the 16th day of the 7th month, we need only to consider aside from the coincidences the fact that the more sure word of prophecy, 2 Peter 1 verse 19, certifies that he was to preach three and a half years and then be cut off, Daniel 9 verse 26. And as he was crucified on the 16th of the first month, he must have been baptized for the ministry just three and a half years before on the 16th day of the seventh month. So that is um, very plain, brothers and sisters. Now before I will show to you that um, exhibit number one, uh, let me see that concerning 1,200 from Christ's baptism to uh, his crucifixion. Let us show first. I know if we could be able only to establish the, the divine formula, it would even more easier for us to count backward and count, uh, count forward. So, okay, so this is the... So, so you can copy this diagram. The author says that Jesus Christ was baptized on October 16, 27 AD. And he was crucified on April 16, 31 AD. And in Daniel chapter 9, it says that uh, three and a half years from Christ's baptism to his crucifixion. And we know that three and a half years is easy to understand by multiplying three times 360. That will be 1,080. Then... 360 divided by 2, that would be 180. So, 1,080 plus 180 days equals 1,260 days, brothers and sisters. So, 
in that uh, divine formula alone, we can fully establish that the Bible calendar consists only 360 days every year. Now, since we have only seven days in one week, so if let us divide 1,260 days by 7 equals 180. So since the answer is a whole number without any remainder, so it can be easily understood that when it was ended on Friday, it was also begin on Friday. So October 16 must be Friday. April 16 must be Friday because the days are divisible by 7 indicating that from October 16, 27 AD, there must be 180 Pride Days. Therefore, April 16, 31 AD is the 180th Pride Day beginning from October 16, 27 AD. So, in that divine formula alone, brothers and sisters, we can immediately um, discern how God hidden the Bible creation calendar in the enemies of God. But the statement in Answerer number 3, page 10 and 11, saying that the Lord God gave to Moses the sacred yearly calendar, which cannot be lost or miscalculated. But the absolute thanks that without the two golden pipes, Sister White and Pity Hunter, and even more particularly to the shepherd's rod itself. But the shepherd's rod alone cannot stand without the writings of Sister Wine. Otherwise, Sikaraya 4, there should be only two, uh, there should only one uh, golden pipe. But the mere fact that the illustration in Sikaraya 4, there are two golden pipes, brothers and sisters, plainly indicating that both of them contributed the divine formula of the plan of redemption. That we cannot be able to comprehend the Bible without their inspired comments or uh, inspired revelation. As is stated in track number 6 on page 23. So I'd like to read the statement. It says, clearly then, the bowl in which the golden oil is stored symbolizes the storehouse of present truth. The word interpreted, the only storehouse that contains inspired comments on both testaments is the books of the spur prophecy. They therefore are the golden bowl. The symbolism definitely points out that from them, the ministers must get the light producing truth with which to supply the church so that it may brightly shine in this dark world, drawing to the light all men who hate the darkness. Track number 6, page 23. Now, let us read to SR. Because the statement the Lord God gave to Moses, brothers and sisters, the only uh, historical event by which the occurrences uh, covered the entire 12 months unbroken line is the historical event concerning the flood. Now let us try to view, brothers and sisters, that historical event, the flood, as explained by the Shepherd's Rod. And to ask the, the question recorded in 2SR 240 saying, what is the flood to us? So what is the flood to us? And it says, why Miller's mistake? And then it says, what is the flood to us? First, the flood to us, the only historical event that we could trace to establish the Bible uh, creation calendar. Because the, the story of the flood, brothers and sisters, began on May 10 on uh, the second month. And from that, uh, this diagram is taken from... 2SR 246, 47 to 48. Now, uh, let me read to you. Uh, 2SR 248. It says, The following is a summary and a grand total of days. 
40 while reigning, 110 to the time they began to subside, 164 days for the waters to reside in the bowels of the earth, and 56 for the earth to dry, making a total of 370 days, and seven before the flood had started, reaching a grand total of 377 days, 12 months and 17 days in all, 30 days to the month. So this paragraph is completely telling us that the Bible creation calendar, it says in one year, 12 months. So the entire history of the flood, brothers and sisters, having a grand total of 377 days, it says 12 months and 17 days in all, 30 days to the month. Now, for example, let us uh, try to explain it. <clears throat> Since it begins on May, May, and it says 12 months, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Now let us count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2030, 2031, 2032, 2033, 2034, 2035, 2036, 2037, 2038, 2039, 2040, 2041, 2042, 2043, 2044, 2045, 2046, 2047, 2048, 2049, 2050, 2051, 2052, 2053, 2054, 2055, 2056, 2057, 2058, 2059, 2060, 2070, 2071, 2072, 2073, 2074, 2075, 2076, 2077, 2078, 2079, 2080, 2081, 2082, 2083, 2084, 2085, 2086, 2087, 2088, 2089, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2030, 2031, 2032, 2033, 2034, 2035, 2036, 2037, 2038, 2039, 2040, 2041, 2042, 2043, 2044, 2045, 2046, 2047, 2048, 2049, 2050, 2051, 2052, 053, 054, 055, 056, 057, 058, 059, 060, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 067, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068, 068,
Skeptics who read the Bible for the sake of cavilling may through an imperfection comprehension of either science or revelation claim to find contradictions between them, but rightly understood they are in perfect harmony. Moses wrote under the guidance of the Spirit of God and the correct theory of geology will never claim discoveries that cannot be reconciled with his statements. All truth, whether in nature or in revelation, is consistent with itself in all its manifestations. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 114. So let us read again that historical event on modern times and the living past. On page uh, 34, it says, The Egyptians studied the heavens and attained a knowledge of astronomy. And one of their greatest achievements was their fixing the length of the year at 365 days. The Egyptian calendars was devised in 42-41 BC. By it, the year was divided into 12 months of 30 days each, leaving five holidays at the end of the year. It was this calendar with slight changes that Julius Caesar adopted for the Roman people many centuries later. Caesar added the five holidays to various months, thus making them uneven in length and provided that one year in four should have 366 days. And they called it the leap year. Many centuries later, Pope Gregory XIII again corrected the calendar in 1582 AD, and that was in October. And in the form in which he left it, it is in use now in nearly all civilized lands, even to this present time. So, that is very plain, brothers and sisters. The, the calendar, in reality, that Julian calendar and Gregorian calendar was copied from the Egyptian calendar, 365 days. The only thing is that in the Egyptian calendar, there is no leap year. But when Julius Caesar uh, copied that calendar from the Egyptian calendar, he placed 360 days every fourth year, by which they called it the leap year. But the voice of inspiration says, here in answer number 3, on page 10, Thus we see that his great and never earing timepiece for earth, the earth's own invariable movement, Fix the day and the year, whereas the moon's revolving round the earth makes the months. Um, answerer number 3 on page 10. On answerer number 3, page 8, it says, The light which shone on the first day, by which God divided the day from the night, set the earth revolving on its axis, was not, however, that of the sun, for the sun and the moon were not created until the fourth day, when he spoke them forth to rule over the day and over the night. Genesis 1 verse 18. Which he had beforehand established. Thus it was that whereas the earth began punctuating eternal time with the first night of creation week from which the weekly seventh day Sabbath is measured, the moon began punctuating time at the end of the third day and at the beginning of the fourth night from which the month is measured. And the sun began to punctuate time at the end of the fourth night and the beginning of the fourth day from which the year is measured. Accordingly, the time span which measure and segments the week is three days in advance of the time spans which measure and segment the solar year and the lunar month. In order, therefore, that his people might commemorate the week of creation from the instant that the span of earthly time began, God commanded from even to even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. So, that is very plain here in uh, answerer number 3, page 8. Uh, let me read to you the statement in 11 symbolic code. Number 4, it says, page 6, In the beginning, the evening and the morning were the first day. Day is a measurement of time, and God created it. The day, as you know, is composed of 24 hours. An hour being merely a shorter measurement of time. Since the earth can measure but 24 hours each time it turns on its axis, earth then has its only means of time measurement, its rotation on its axis, and its circuit through its orbit. 
So that is very plain. It says, brothers and sisters, do you realize that were it not for this, we would be without time? Instead, it would be eternity. Therefore, eternity has no time. Time is manufactured. Daniel refers to time, times and half a time, which explain what time is. It is a span measured by the completion of a full round of the earth in its orbit. That is one time. The repetition of it makes times. Then what is eternity? It has no measurement, for it is never to repeat itself like the years do. Time is given us that we may know what part of eternity man has existed on this earth. 11 symbolic code number 4, pages 6 and 7. So in that reading, we can easily discern the, the focal point why God gave the creation calendar is to understand the plan of redemption and more particularly to the 6,000 years prophecy, brothers and sisters, so that we could understand according to the reading that we may know what part of eternity man has existed on this earth because that is the eternal purpose of God, eternity. That is why it is called eternal purpose. But within the eternity, there is a 6,000 years prophecy, brothers and sisters. And how could you be able to locate the 6,000 years prophecy when it begins and ends without the knowledge of the Bible calendar? Now, to repeat, brothers and sisters, when God gave it to us, this information, uh, we spend several times, several days, several weeks, we began to study this very important truth, the Bible creation calendar, since 1996. But it was not completed, I think not until somewhere in 2017 or 2018 or I think 2018 is the, at the end of 2018 and at the beginning of 2019. And the statement in, in 2SR, brothers and sisters, here in 2SR uh, 229, I would like to read 2SR page 229 saying, The 11th hour call. The 11th hour call is the last on record. And only an hour before sunset millennium. The time for its deliverance to the world is shorter than any universal message ever given. Though the time is the shortest, its area over the earth's surface is more extensive than any. Its speedy delivery is of the highest importance, for by it shall the world be judged. God's servants shall have no time or desire for the cares of this world. For there is a city prepared for them whose builder and maker is God. As we have just enough time to get ready for translation, we must not let the enemy steal our precious moments. Because the work is so broad, its expansion so vast, and its importance so great, God has inspired modern Zions to invent and build speedy equipment to quickly finish his work. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, and many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Daniel 12, verse 4 and 10. There are two uh, supernatural power that guides the destiny of men, and that is the power of evil and the power of God. And I do fully believe that that statement and one is are that modern science who invented wicked devices that is coming from the spirit of the devil. I think that is in 1SR saying uh, wicked devices, brothers and sisters. But this modern science, yes, it says in 1SR 225, while the world is making rapid progress in human wisdom and wicked devices. So, that inspiration coming from Satan. But, the modern science mentioned here, saying that it is God who inspired the modern science to invent and build speedy equipment to quickly finish his work. We found out that this statement is also applied in spiritual aspect concerning the finishing of the plan of redemption, the gospel work. 
And also it's stated in White House Recruiter, right? On page 36, uh, saying here in White House Recruiter, page 36, it says, Because time and the gospel are at their climactic hour, and the work is consequently in tran of transcendent scope, expansion, and importance, yet of exceeding short duration. God has inspired men to invent and build time and labor saving, wonder working, earth mastering, tools and machinery of all kinds, marbles which would have staggered the imagination and bigger the credulity of former generations, notwithstanding that centuries aforehand the high and lofty one that inhabit eternity. Isaiah 57 verse 15. Declared, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. Daniel 12, verse 4. And to repeat again, uh, that modern science really helps us, brothers and sisters, because our thesis, our divine formula that had been given by God concerning the restoration of the Bible calendar, although it was already completed in 2018, but uh, you will have a, ha uh, a very long time to have such computation, brothers and sisters, not until this uh, modern science uh, guide us and through that um, inspiration given by God to the modern science, it helps us to complete our thesis concerning the Bible creation calendar. And although... The, the modern science is concerning Gregorian calendar. But through such formula, we applied it to the Bible calendar and it's very effective. And numbers, brothers and sisters, or computers will never give you a wrong answer. If you will um, type 4 times 4 and if you will give wrong answer, the, uh, the computer will indicate that your answer is wrong. So, in this study, brothers and sisters, when we are studying concerning numbers, the answer is always accurate. And I think um, we can apply this statement in 1SR 232 saying, As God is in Palivol, all his works spell perfection, even to one jot or one tittle. The statement being true, he should have provided a way whereby we may check up and ascertain his truth. And the, the way that had been provided by God to us to check up that such message is truth, nothing but the truth concerning but the Bible creation calendar is the weekly cycle. Brothers and sisters, now, for example, B.T. Hotel says, let us read in 2SR, uh, 2SR page 254. It says, Our God commanded Noah with his family, beasts, fowls, and creeping things to enter in the ark on preparation day, Friday. Now, if you will read the Bible, Genesis chapter 7, I would like to read. Genesis chapter 7, verse 13 and 16. In the self same day, entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. Then verse 16, because the quotation is Genesis 7, verse 13 and 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of, fle of flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Now, this is the question. Can you read any statement in Genesis chapter 7 that Noah entered into the ark on Friday? There was no record at all, brothers and sisters. I would like to repeat again. The, the creation Bible calendar, and according to answer error number 3, page 10, the Lord God gave to Moses. Where we could find the creation calendar in the book of Moses, in the book of Genesis, in or on the account of the flood, that historical event. Because one by one mentioned from May to April, brothers and sisters, the Bible declared that Noah entered into the ark on the second month, right? That is on the second month. And the Bible declared clearly that Noah entered into the ark on the tenth day of the second month. That is the only information given in the Bible. Noah entered into the ark on the tenth day of the second month. But the Bible does not tell what day. It was not mentioned. But it is the shepherd's rod who told us 
that that tenth day on the second month that was Friday. But the shepherds did not tell us what year when Noah entered into the ark. So the information, brothers and sisters, that was given by God is from one inspired servant to another. Now, how could we be able to locate the very year when Noah entered into the ark? It is only on the biblical record. And it must be found in Genesis chapter 5. Now, let us read uh, Genesis chapter 5. If you will read Genesis chapter 5, brothers and sisters, uh, maybe you yourself could read uh, Genesis chapter 5, but let us project this. In Genesis chapter 5, from Adam to Seth, there are 130 years. Then from Seth to Enos, there are 105 years. Then from Enos to Canaan, there are 90 years. From Canaan to Mahalalel, 70 years. From Mahalalel to Jerd, 65 years. From Jerd to Enoch, 162 years. From Enoch to Metoshela, that was 65 years. And from Metoshela to Lamech, that is 187 years. And from Lamech to Noah, that is 182 years. And then when flood came, according to Genesis chapter 5, Noah was 600 years old. And also Genesis chapter 6 and chapter 7. So we can add, and the total is 1,656 years. Therefore, from 4,000 BC minus 1,656 years, you will fall in 2344 BC. That is the year of the flood. May 10, 2344 BC. Now let us now try to compute, counting backward from the center of attraction, brothers and sisters, from the center of attraction, which is the cross affection. Now, although it's really uh, hard to explain it in long term or long method that is why the the weekly cycle is the one that answers us on all this bible time prophecy and through the weekly cycle and through the modern science we have been able to establish the divine formula how to calculate from one event to another now, for example, brothers and sisters, because we are still in exhibit number one. Now, look at brothers and sisters. From April 1631 AD, uh, April 1631 AD, Bible calendar, April 1631 AD, then we will count backward up to May 10, 2344 BC. 2344 BC. So, there will be 854,616 days. The number of days from April 16, 31 AD to May 10, 2344 BC, that would be 854,616 days. Now, let, let us show to you the exhibit number one. So, you see 854,600 16 days or 2,373 years and 6 days. And let us now check by dividing by 7. 854,616 days divided by 7 equals 122,088 weeks. So since it is a whole number divisible by 7, then the shepherd's rod is perfect. When it ends on Friday, April 16, Friday, it also begins on Friday. So by the weekly cycle, you can check that such number of days and such computation is perfect. And B.T. Hodem says, Jesus Christ was crucified on Friday, April 16, 31 AD. And then Noah entered into the ark on Friday, May 10. And if um, how do we come up 2344 BC? By the Bible. From Adam to flood, there were 1,656 years. 4,000 minus 1,656, that is 2344 BC. Now, 
we will count backward from uh, from Christ baptism. Uh, let us go first to exhibit number two. Exhibit number two. Now, for sure, I will no longer explain, brothers and sisters, because it is uh, commonly understood by many Bible students, Sabbath keepers, that the 2,300 years commenced in October 16, 457 BC. Ended in o October 1634 AD, and it is Friday. And for 190 years, it's divisible by seven. For 190 years times 360 days equals 176,400 days. And 176,400 days divided by seven equals 25,200 days. Since there is no remainder, therefore, it is divisible by seven. And if the number of days is divisible by seven, can be easily understood that when it begins on Friday, it must end on the same day, Friday, because it is divisible by seven. Right, brothers and sisters? The same with the three and a half years from Christ's baptism to his crucifixion. So, for sure, this October 16, 457 BC, this is a Bible calendar. So, we have many foundations that we could build this Bible creation calendar and our foundation is based on the 2,300 years. It is based on, first, on the first 490 years within the 2,300, 2,300 years. From October 16, 457 BC ended in October 16, 34 AD, right? Uh, let me see if I could find that on the Great Controversy. Here on the Great Controversy, uh, page 326. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. The week here brought to you is the last one of the 70. It is the last seven years of the period allotted especially to the Jews. During this time, extending from AD 27 to AD 34. This is very plain here in the Great Controversy 326. And he shall confirm the covenant. Look at the statement. And he shall confirm the co covenant with many for one week. And then the week here brought to view the great controversy, page 326. Okay, so that is the statement. The great controversy, 326. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. The week here brought to view is the last one of the 70. It is the last seven years of the period allotted especially to the Jews. During this time, extending from AD 27 to AD 34. So we have the, the proofs, brothers and sisters, both in the Bible, in the writings of Sister White and the writings of B.T.E. Hobbit. Now, for example, brothers and sisters, since the Bible calendar begin in creation, uh, that is pattern number one. Because God will begin on number one, 100%. God will not begin on pattern number seven. The Bible calendar must have seven patterns. And the pattern number one begin on creation. Now let us read answerer number three. Here in answerer number three, on page 11, it says, Thus was the Lord re-establishing the creation calendar, reaffirming, that the year begins on the day of the vernal equinox, on which spring the first season of the year commences, and on which the sun and the moon were created the fourth day from the beginning of creation, the only point in time at which in the very nature of things the year could begin. So that is pattern number one. April 1 fall on Wednesday, the fourth day, of the beginning of creation according to that reading. So with that clue given by the shepherd's rod, we have 4000 BC pattern number one. So this is pattern number one. April 1 begin on Wednesday. And with this calendar, you can proceed forward from April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So the last day of pattern number one, March 30, fall on Friday. Therefore, pattern number two, April 1, begin on pattern number two. 
begin on Saturday, then the same, counting 30 days every month, then the last day of March fall on Monday. Therefore, pattern number three, begin on Tuesday, April 1, the same procedure. Then March 30 fall on Thursday. Therefore, pattern number four, begin on Friday, April 1. Then the same path, pattern, brothers and sisters. March 30 ended on Sunday. Therefore, pattern number five, April 1, begin on Monday. And the same. The end part is March 30, Wednesday. Therefore, pattern number six begins on Thursday. Then the same, you will use 30 days every month, ended on Saturday. Therefore, pattern number seven begin on Sunday. Then you will count 30 days every month, ended on March 30, ended on Tuesday. Then, therefore, after seven year cycles, go back to the same pattern, pattern number one. Uh, we can save these seven patterns and send to the brethren who are listening. You can copy that uh, seven patterns of the Bible calendar. And we enumerate, we have this, uh, let me show to you, seven patterns of Bible calendar. Um, only April 1, Wednesday, in summarization, uh, seven patterns of the Bible calendar. So this is the seven patterns of Bible calendar. Pattern number one, April 1 fall on Wednesday. Pattern number 2, April 1 fall on Saturday. Pattern number 3, April 1 fall on Tuesday. Pattern number 4, April 1 fall on Friday. Pattern number 5, April 1 fall on Monday. Pattern number 6, April 1 fall on Thursday. Pattern number 7, April 1 fall on Sunday. Now, we could show to you that that information given by God is accurate, brothers and sisters. Just using April 16, 31 AD. April 16, 31 AD is pattern number 6. Because pattern number 6, April 1 fall on Thursday. Now, look at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Let me show to you. April. So, this is the one. You see? April 16, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Friday. So, this is pattern number 6. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Therefore, April 1 begin on Thursday. Thursday. I think it's better to S-M-T-W-T-H-F-S. Now, let us count brothers and sisters. And let us go to uh, uh, exhibit number 3. Exhibit number 3. Our exhibit number three is found in the statement given by Sister White in Bible Commentary. I would like to read Bible Commentary. Here in Bible Commentary, it says here, 5 B.C. 1081. 5 B.C. 1081. Christ in the wilderness of temptation stood in Adam's place to bear the test he failed to endure. Here Christ overcome in the sinner's behalf 4,000 years after Adam turned his back upon the light of his home. How many years when uh, Adam and Eve were driven from the Garden of Eden to the time when Jesus Christ overcame temptation at the end of the 40 days? There were exactly 4,000 years. Now, let us now count backward. November 27, 27 AD. November 27, 27 AD. We'll count backward 4,000 years. You see, you will fall in November 27, 3974 BC. And let us now make an analysis. So, pa, uh, exhibit number three. Let us show to you. Since the, the weekly cycle never been changed and never been altered, so let us multiply by days. 4,000 times 360 days equals 1,440,000 days. 4,000 times 360 days equals 1,440,000 days. Then let us divide by 7 because there are only 7 days in one week. 1,440,000 days, 1,440,000 days divided by 7 equals 205,714 weeks. Then let us multiply by 7. 
205,714 weeks times 7 equals 1,439,998 days. Then, let us subtract. 1,440,000 days uh, subtracted by 1 million or minus 1,439,998 days equals 2. So since there is a remainder 2, then we can easily discern that since um, the wilderness temptation of Jesus Christ ended on Thursday, then you need to uh, count backward 2 days. 1, 2. So it must be, it was begin on Tuesday. So by, by using this formula, um, seven days, number seven. And this is also the number given by the Sharper in 1SR 232. Number three and number seven is the number given by God to a certain scriptural truth. So, Sister White is perfect. That exactly 4,000 years from the time when Jesus Christ ended the wilderness temptation, overcame such temptation. That is 4,000 years from the time Adam and Eve were driven from the Garden of Eden. That is November 27, 3974 BC, Tuesday, and this must be Thursday. And to check up this computation as perfect, this is the formula using number seven. Seven days in one week or the weekly cycle. So, 4,000 years, that would be exactly 1,440,000 days. 1,440,000 days by multiplying 4,000 to 360 days. And since that 1,440,000 days equivalent only to 205,714 weeks, not divisible by 7, therefore, since there is a remainder 2, can be easily understood to check up that such computation is perfect can be easily understood that when it begins on Tuesday, it must end on Thursday. If it was ended on Thursday, if you will count backward, it must begin on Tuesday. So this computation, brothers and sisters, it must be perfect. Now, let us now uh, count the, the, the duration time, brothers and sisters. How many days did Adam and Abe remain in the Garden of Eden. Now, let, let us now, from November 27, 3974 BC to April 1, 4000 BC, the commencement of the creation. April 1, 4000 BC. Is it, that is 3974 BC. Why is it, is it not the appropriate, the, the end part and the beginning part is here? 4000 BC and then that's why it become error. 3974 BC. So Adam and Eve live in the Garden of Eden for just 9,596 days or 26 years, 7 months and 26 days, brothers and sisters. So that is the um, exact number of days before they were driven from the Garden of, of Eden. And if you have some question, brothers and sisters, do not hesitate to send it on our email or on our website. And we will deal it gladly, brothers and sisters. Now, this exhibit number four is a little difficult, brothers and sisters. And it's very important to focus our attention in exhibit number four. And you, you can have this. Uh, diagram, but it will be explained more and more, and we will repeat it also even to the subject, the 12 figurative months. This exhibit number four is the illustration, the comparison with the Bible calendar and the Julian calendar. The Julian calendar, it was uh, introduced immediately after Julius Caesar died, although it is Julius Caesar who formulated that calendar which is copied only from the Egyptian calendar. But the one who had been able to introduce that calendar is Augustus Caesar. And that was still in the period of BC, brothers and sisters. 
So, when the Julian calendar, we know Julian calendar begins on January. January. But we begin on April because that April 2, 1 AD, January, February, March, April, the fourth month of the Julian calendar. In Bible calendar, that is uh, May 14, 28 BC. May 14, 28 BC. So uh, maybe we will also show to you from the be from the very beginning of the Julian calendar, uh, January 1, uh, January, January 1 in 1 AD. So the only way that you could be able to trace back the, the Bible calendar is through the weekly cycle and by the number of days in every month and in every year. So let us um, explain this portion, brothers and sisters. April 14, 28 BC, this is Saturday. This is also Saturday. Saturday. This is Friday. This is also Friday. April 2, 1 AD, and May 14, 28 BC. That is pointing to the same day. I would like to repeat again. May 14, 28 BC. April 2, 1 AD. That is pointing to the same day. The same day. Saturday. On that Saturday, in Bible calendar, that is May 14, 28 BC. That Saturday, in Julian calendar, that is April 2, 1 AD. So if you will count from May 14, 28 BC to April 16, 31 AD, it is 20,852 days. In Bible calendar, you will fall on April 16, 31 AD. But if you will count April to 1 AD, Saturday, 20,852 days. On Julian calendar, you will fall on May 5, 58 AD. Therefore, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ on Julian calendar, that is May 5, 58 AD. But in Bible calendar, that was April 16, 31 AD. Now, this is the analysis of Julian calendar. From 1 AD, to 58 AD, there are 14 leap years. So let us uh, multiply 14 times 366 equals 5,124 days. Then there are 42, which is not leap year. 42 times 365 equals 15,330 days. In 1 AD, beginning from April, there are remaining 273 days. And in 58 AD, there are 125 days. And if you will add 5,124, 15,330, 273, 125 equals 20,852 days. So that is how you will locate Bible calendar together with the Jul Julian. And moving forward up to the time when the Gregorian cal calendar is introduced in 1582 AD. So this is the, how do we come up 273 days? Because uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we know... Julian calendar begin in January, and January has 31 days. And 1 AD is not a leap year. So it is 28 days, February, March, then 31 plus 2 equals 92. So let us subtract 365 minus 92 to 73 days. Therefore, in April 2, 1 AD, there are remaining 273 days. Now we have here on 58 AD, uh, 31 plus 28 plus 31 plus 30 plus 5 equals 125 days. So that is the total, 20,852 days. In Bible calendar, so this is Bible calendar, the computation. Of course, in 28 BC, let us count the whole year, 27 years. 27 times 360 equals 9,720 days. And since that is 31 AD, let us count the whole year, 30 years. 30 times 360 equals 10,800 days. In 28 BC, there are remaining 316 days because uh, that was May 14. Therefore, April 30 plus May 14 equals 44. 360 minus 44 equals 316. So that is 316 days remaining in 28 BC plus 16 days in 31 AD. Then let us uh, add 9,720 days, 10,800 days, 316, 
and then 16 equals 20,852 days. Therefore, this is the end part. Um, this is the Bible calendar. April 16, Jesus Christ was crucified. And in Julian calendar, that is May 5. So, May 5, 58 AD, that is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ in Julian calendar. But in Bible calendar, that is April 16, 31 AD. Or in other words, that Friday on Julian calendar, May 5. But in Bible calendar, that is April 16. The same day, brothers and sisters. So, this is exhibit number 4. Now, let us go to uh, exhibit number 5. Let us go to exhibit number 5. Now, this exhibit number 5. So, let us move forward up to the time when the calendar was changed. It was in October 4, 1582. And we will show to you how the calendar had been changed. We found it in exhibit number 6. So, from April 16, 31 AD, which is in Julian calendar, that is May 5, 58 AD. So, from May 5, 58 AD, now, the... The only way that you could locate the Bible calendar together with the Julian calendar is through the weekly cycle because weekly cycle never been changed. Now, look at brothers and sisters. May 5, 58 AD, that is Friday. That is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, Julian calendar. But in reality, in Bible calendar, that was April 16, 31 AD. Now, from May 5, 58 AD, you will count 556,793 days fall on October 4, 1582 AD. This is the point by which the Gregorian calendar was introduced in 1582 AD. Now from the Bible calendar, from April 1631 AD, you will count 556,793 days. You will fall on Thursday December 9, 1577 A.D. Therefore, December 9, 1577 A.D. in Julian calendar, that is October 4, 1582 A.D. Now, let us count now the uh, through this analysis. Julian calendar. From 58 A.D. to 1582, there are 381 leap years. So, 381 times 366, that is 139,446 days. But from 58 AD to 1582, there are 1,142 years which is not leap year. Therefore, 1,142 times 365 equals 416,830 days. Now, in 58 AD, there are remaining 240 days. So, let us count. January, February, March, April, May, then 125 days. Then 365 minus 125 equals 240. So that is the 240 days. And in, in 1582, there are 277 days. Uh, beginning from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, then October 4. All in all, that is 277 days. And you will add... 139,446 days, 416,830 days, 240 days, 277, equals 556,793 days. Now in Bible calendar, 1576, because this is 1577 ED, 1576 minus 31 equals 1545. So 1,545 years times 360 days, equals 556,200 days. In 31 AD, there are 344 days remaining. In 1577 AD, there are 249. Where is the formula? So, the total is 556,793 days. The same total. So, by the number of days through weekly cycle, we can trace backward and forward. Now, let us go to exhibit number 6. Let us go to exhibit number 6. Now, this is the exhibit number 6. This is the Bible calendar, 1577 AD, in corresponding with the Julian calendar. So, so this is the Julian calendar. In 1582 AD, Pope Gregory, this is the only changes that Pope Gregory did. 
in October 4, 1582, supposed to be on Friday, that is October 5. But uh, 11 days had been dropped. It became October 15. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And then up to this present time. That is the only changes from Julian to Gregorian. They drop 11 days. But the weekly cycle never been dropped. Only the, the number. That is why we need to count the weekly cycle, not the number of the dates. Now, so up to October 22, 1844. From October 4, 1582 AD to October 22, 1844. This is Thursday and that is Tuesday. That is 95,702 days. 95,000. Now, we will show to you, brothers and sisters, on the timeanddeath.com. Let us go to uh, that, our calculator and this one from um, December 9, 1577 AD, Bible calendar. 1577 AD up to October 11, 1843. So, exact 95,702 days. And in Julian, this is October 4, 1582. Ended in October 22, 1844. So, this is the one. Uh, so, here, brothers and sisters, From October 4, 1582 to October 22, 1844, there are 95,702 days. Now, let us go to our exhibit number 6. So, this is the formula, analysis in Gregorian calendar. From 1582 AD to 1844, there are 62 leap years. 62 times 366 days to 22,696 days. There are 199 years, not leap year, times 365, equals 72,635 days. In 1582, that is only 79 days, brothers and sisters, that had been remained. Because in reality, in October, since it was dropped, it is only 18 days. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Only 18 days. We have November 30 and December 31, so that is 79 days. Then in 1844, From January to October 22, 296 days. So if you will add 95,702 days. So it is by days. From October 4, 1582 to October 22, 1844. That is exactly 95,702 days. In Bible calendar, let us, this is the formula. 1577 uh, AD. December, um, in December, there is remaining 21 days because it is December 9. So, 30 minus 9 equals 21. Then, January, February, March. So, that is 111 days. And in 1843, from April, because the commencement of the Bible calendar, April, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and that is 11, that is 191 days. So, 18 or 1,842 years minus 1577 equals 265. Therefore, 265 years times 360 equals 95,400. Then, we have 111 and 191. So, 95,400 days plus 111 plus 191 equals 95,702 days. The same number of days. Therefore, October 22, 1844, In Bible calendar, that is October 11, 1843. And before the Bible calendar had been restored, I really confused the statement in track number 6. Let me read to you. Track number 6, the statement given by the shepherd's word. Track number 6 on page 30. It says, the key, of in, the key of the interpretation to this honey is found in Revelation 10, verse 10. And I took the little book, says John, out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. This honey sweetness explained in detail in our track number 5, Final Warning, represents the joy that came to the believers in William Miller's time through their wholehearted belief that the Lord was coming in the fall of 1843 A.D., to take them to their home in the land that is very far off, where their eyes would see the king in his beauty. Isaiah 33 verse 17, 
but as the day passed and the expected event failed to materialize, then overwhelming disappointment as depicted by the little books turning bitter came to everyone who, in honest expectancy, yearningly anticipated that long hoped for journey through the starry heavens to the city, four square, the capital of the earth made new. So before the, the Bible calendar was established, I'm really thinking, why is it that B.T. Hotem says that the, the disappointment occurred in October 1843, while in historical event, the disappointment occurred in October 1844. But when the Bible calendar was established, this statement is absolutely perfect because this 1843 is Bible calendar. The disappointment occurred in October 1843. So this 1843 is not Gregorian. It is Bible calendar because in Gregorian, that was 1844. So let us go back again, brothers and sisters, to exhibit number 6. So this is exhibit number 6. Therefore, in Gregorian calendar, October 22, 1844, Tuesday, in Bible, that is in reality, October 11. Therefore, the statement in the shepherd's rod that the cleansing of the sanctuary is after October 22, 1844. What is the cleansing? In the most holy place, blotting out of sins. In the holy place, blotting out of names. It is after the 2,300 years. And October 22, 1844 is a part of the 2,300 years. It is the end part of 2,300 years. So the statement after. I think there are more than three statements. But I would like to quote only one statement in uh, 2 TG number 42. It says here, 2 TG number 42 and page um, 32 and page 33. And the angel explained, and the angel explained that the cleansing of the sanctuary, and the angel explained that the cleansing of the sanctuary, cleansing it from both error and hypocrisy, takes place after the 2,300 days during the time of the end. So the very first cleansing must be on the Day of Atonement in Bible calendar, October 10, 1844. That is the very first day of atonement. But in Gregorian, that is already October 16, 1845. So, October 22, 1844 is the commencement of the investigative judgment. The, the great controversy says the sins of the people or the righteous can never be blotted out, not until after the investigative judgment. So, investigative judgment first before blotting out. So here in the Great Controversy, 485, it says, The work of the investigative judgment and the blotting out of sins is to be accomplished before the second advent of the Lord. Since the dead are to be judged out of the things written in the books, it is impossible that the sins of men should be blotted out until after the judgment, at which time their cases are to be investigated. So every year, there must be 359 days investigation. And on the Day of Atonement, those names that did not pass the investigation, their names will be blotted out. And only those names remain retained in the Lamb's Book of Life. They are the only ones whose sins are to be blotted out. So on the Day of Atonement, there are two works to be accomplished. Blotting out of names first. Then after the names had been blotted out, those names that had been retained in the Lamb's Book of Life, blotting out of sins. It is also stated in the Great Controversy, page 421. So to repeat again, brothers and sisters, October 22, 1844, in Bible calendar, that is October 11, Tuesday. And this is pattern number 5. And it will be perfectly corroborating to the seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Now let us go to pattern number five, Bible calendar, to show to you that that is pattern number five. So this is pattern number five. October 11, Tuesday. October 10 is Monday. So in Gregorian, this is October 21. And October 11 is October 22. So this, that is pattern number five. 
Now let me show to you the the seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And this is the last uh, slide. And we'll continue uh, on our next episode. To repeat again, this is an special episode concerning the subject, the Bible calendar. And it is dedicated to all the brethren, Shepherds Rod believers, um, those who wish to know directly concerning the Bible calendar. And on our next episode, still a special episode, because we have at least 12 exhibits to show to you the Bible calendar. So this is the seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, brothers and sisters. By which the, the shepherds would say is that um, Jacob entered into Egypt on the second year of famine. So the second year of famine, brothers and sisters, that is on uh, which is uh, pattern number five and pattern number six. So, because the Seventh Day Adventist Church did not became a denomination not until 1845, the birth of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, as uh, stated by the Shepherds. Right? So, perfectly corroborating to Jacob's entry into Egypt. So, the next slide: seven years of plenty. So, this is the actual seven years of plenty. And then seven years of famine. So in 1706 BC, that is the second year of famine. But the end part, not the beginning, brothers and sisters. That is the time when Jacob entered into Egypt. And that experience, according to the Shepherd's Rod in 1 SR page 76, perfectly typifying the birth of the Seventh day Adventist denomination in 1845. By which that is pattern. Number six. So the entire Bible in reality is in perfect harmony, brothers and sisters. So to repeat again, 1844 in Bible calendar that was 1843 and that was pattern number five. 1844 in Bible calendar that is pattern number six. But in Gregorian calendar that was already 1845 which is the birth of the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. And here on, I think, 1SR page 76, the beginning of this denomination was typified by Israel's entrance into Egypt as previously explained. Now, in the next paragraph, in the beginning of the church in 1845, you see, so to repeat again, here in 1SR page 76, it says in the upper portion, the beginning of this denomination was typified by Israel's entrance into Egypt as previously explained. And then it says, in the beginning of the church in 1845, so the beginning of the denomination began in the year 1845. So it is really perfect because that is pattern number six. And that is also the same pattern of the Bible calendar when Jacob enters into Egypt. So the type and anti-type exactly fits perfectly much, brothers and sisters. Not only to the event, but as to the time. The Great Controversy 399, 1SR Packet Edition, page 73, Answerer number 3, page 23. So we will continue this subject, brothers and sisters. To repeat again in our episode number 13 still, it is a special episode of the subject, the Bible calendar, because it is almost the summary of the entire subject from creation down to the commencement of the millennium. So hoping that the good Lord will bless us and would help us, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much for listening and viewing this program. Have a beautiful, wonderful evening.